Okay, now that you have learned how to thread your needle with thread and to tie a knot, and now that you have practiced the back stitch, how you do the back stitch and how you end the back stitch with a tailor's tack, you are ready to begin to sew your squares together. So the first thing you wanna do is do a little bit of design. You have five squares of one kind. I happen to have five squares of this salsa fabric, which I love. You put four of those squares in the corner, and then you have a square for the middle too, all right? Now I'm gonna make a little design change here. I have a favorite square. And my favorite square is this one right here. I love those peppers. I want people to see those. And I'm gonna pull that to the middle and put this over here. Another thing that I'm doing is balancing. To me, this square and this square are less interesting than all three of these. But these are the squares I have, all right? What I would not wanna do is have all three interesting ones on one side of the pillow. It makes this side of the pillow more dominant and heavy. I like having this one, which is not so noticeable, balanced by this one at the top that's not so noticeable. And my three that really have a distinct pattern on them kind of create a diagonal. That's a better way to arrange this pillow. Then, of course, you take the squares that you have four of, and you just lay them in the middle. Okay, so I'm just going to do that real quick. You lay them in the middle. Look, you can already tell what my pillow is going to look somewhat like. Okay, I like it. A pillow that has salsa as a theme. I make a lot of salsa in the summer, and I have people over my back porch for salsa, so I like this. Once you get your pillow designed, I want you to imagine your pillow in three rows, three disconnected rows, okay? Because before we can make the entire pillow, we have to sew this seam and this seam and create a row that is sewn together. Then we're gonna do the same here, and then we're gonna create a third row right here. So I am going to put, I'm going to, oh boy, okay, I'm going to put these two away for right now, okay? I've got it designed. I may have to do that work again, but I've thought about it, and I'm going to look just at the top row. This is number one, two, and three. Now, you know we want these to be joined right here, and I, let me switch my camera to where you can see it this way. You want them to be joined right here. Now here comes a truth about sewing. Listen very carefully. We're gonna take the right side of this square and we're gonna turn it downward onto our red square. So the seam we wanna sew is over here. And it's real important that you get that right. If you sew this one together or this one together or this one together, you're gonna have a wonky pillow. So let me show you that one more time. This is your top row that you have designed in the pillow you designed. You're gonna start on the left and you are going to turn this over onto the middle and you're gonna use two pins to hold it together. Remember we've talked about this holding it together. There's one pin and here's another pin holding those edges. Notice I've got it as even as I can here and here. Evenness matters. If you put it on there and sew it on wonky and not lined up, then your pillow won't line up. So now you know this is where we're gonna sew. So this is where, let me put this third one away for a second. I'm gonna flip this around and the, I, I am gonna sew a one quarter inch seam on this. That means when I draw my line, there's one inch. On the practice, we did a half of an inch. I don't want to lose that much of my squares on this pillow, so I'm gonna use just half of that, a fourth of an inch. So I'm gonna put this in at, on at the fourth of an inch. Half of half of an inch is one fourth of an inch. And I'm gonna make myself a tiny hatch mark there. And then I'm gonna make a fourth of an inch in the middle, tiny hatch mark here, 
and I'm gonna do a third one with a tiny hatch mark here. And then I'm going to use my ruler to draw a straight line through each of those hatch marks. Remember when you're drawing on fabric, you have to be kind of light with it, kind of light, okay? So there is my line that I'm gonna sew on. I'm gonna correct this just a little bit and pull this out. I think it slipped, okay? So there's my line that I'm gonna sew on. You can see it right there, all right? So now you know what the next thing is to do. I'm gonna pull off about 24 inches of thread and when I cut it, don't forget to cut it at an angle. Then I'm going to get my needle. I'm going to hold my thread extremely close. Remember the lizard, stick out its tongue. I know that you're probably tired of that, but that's okay, it's a good image. I tried once, oh, it took me twice. Push that thread through, hold it steady, pull it, even up your end pieces, even them up until they are together. Make your thread kind of straight. And then let's do it. Um, you can do it any way you like it. That first way where you put the wraps around the needle, that's not how I usually do it. I'm going to put it on the pad of my finger, pinch, make a circle, rub and roll that finger, that thread off the finger, make the loop twist. Look at all those twists in the loop. Then you pull down on the twisted loop, all right? So now, you don't wanna start way out here. You would leave this much unsewn, and that's not good. You wanna start at the, at the edge, as close as you can to the edge, and still have it hold. And now is the time to begin to make those stitches pretty small. You can probably hardly see you can see where I've got, I went down and up. Now my job is to go back to where I started and go down there and come up just a tiny bit on the line past where my thread was. And to pull it, make sure you don't leave any loops in the thread. Give a gentle tug, but not enough that it makes, makes it buckle. So there's my first back stitch, and I'm still got a little loop in it. So I'm going to split those and see if I can figure out which thread I need to pull to get rid of that loop. I just found it, okay? The threads can't have any loops in them, so you gotta keep the thread free of loops. So there is my first back stitch. So now I'm gonna hold the piece. I'm gonna put my finger in at the end and come up right on the line, push it through, pull, and look here. I have two back stitches, two very tiny back stitches. I can tell the light is not quite right on that. Lighting is the hardest part of videoing. You can see the two stitches and my space. So I'm gonna make another one. Let me try to get it where I'm out of the shadows. I'm gonna go down in the end of my last stitch Come up a little bit ahead, a little bit ahead, not much. Pull, and there is stitch number three. Don't pull it too tight. Don't make it um, draw these pieces into a shorter line. Here's my third stitch. And I'm going to keep on for a minute. You can watch me do this if you want to, or just leave it on while you're working. I want you to see me finish this out, okay? There's about the sixth stitch. I'm making these very small because I want them to be strong. When we stuff the pillow, it will put pressure on our seams. So you want to keep them as small and tight as you can, okay? Baby stitches are stronger stitches, believe it or not. Big, long stitches mean you'll get through faster and your pillow will come apart when you are when, when you stuff it. It'll have big gaps between your stitches. Don't want that. All right, so I want you to look at how small I made these. Almost look like sewing machine stitches. Almost. 
almost look like sewing machine stitches. That's what you're looking for. I have a lot of thread left, so I'm just going to keep on stitching to the end, and I'm going to quit talking for a moment. Let me see. I'm going to pull this up. Pull the thread down below the line. Insert your needle. Come up ahead and pull. By the way, this pin is done with its work. I can take it out. My stitches hold it together. I love taking out pins and using just stitches. You can see I'm more than halfway, y'all. This is this does not take long, and you will get faster every time you make a seam. Every single time you make a seam, you will get faster. If you've sewn before, you probably find this easy. If you've never sewn before, it's not. And I know that. But keep trying. It's, it's a good thing to try something new. And using your hands and creating something with your hands can be a really happy thing. All right. You can see I left a bigger gap right there. You don't need to go back and redo that if you did. I'm not going to go back and redo it. It's still very strong. But I am going to try it. What I didn't do is come all the way back to my stitch to insert my needle. I went in between. This time I'm going to make sure I go all the way back to my stitch because I really like it that way best. I don't think I'm going to have enough thread to finish. Y'all, some do you see how my thread is looping up? If you drop your thread down, downward, and you let the needle spin for a minute, some of the twist comes out of the thread and it will stop knotting up on you. I'm gonna actually have to get more thread to finish this. I'm gonna take about two more stitches and then I'm gonna do that thing we call a tailor's tack. Okay, and then I'm gonna have to get new thread and finish. Even this little bit, even though I'm close to the edge, I still have to get something to finish. You can't stitch right on the edge. You have to have some fabric between the cut edge. Now I'm ready for that tailor's tack. So I'm going to go down and come up where my thread comes up because I'm not going to try to make a new stitch yet. Remember about piggybacking. One, there's two. And here is the third stitch right on top that I'm using instead of a knot, okay? Pull, don't pull so tight that it buckles it. Get your scissors and cut. And a pity that I have to get a new thread for just this much, but I do. And that will happen to you sometime too. So I'm gonna get more thread, cut it at an angle. Whoops, there we go. Hold it very close to the edge. Put it in, what, missed, into the needle. This is stubborn. I just licked my fingers and kind of flatten that thread. That is another trick that helps. Make the two ends even. And do the loopy knot. It's really fast when you learn how to do it. Okay, pull my threads until they're even. And then I can start on the top and start up right at the end of my back stitch and then have my tailor's tack down and up. Now I'm up and running again with some fresh thread. Only about five more stitches need to be made. There's two. Here's three, maybe six. Here's down in the end of that, up slightly in front of your thread, four, and 
five. I think I can do one more stitch right up to the edge. Actually, I don't think I need to actually. I'm gonna do a tailor's tack right here. Here's one, whoops, here's two, right on top of each other. And here's the third one, right on top. And I wanna show you what we've got here. This is the first thing, ooh, see how I caught on the pin? Let's take that pin out, get it out of the way. It's unneeded. That seam is now done. You guys, people used to make their clothes all by hand without sewing machines. And they did it with hand stitches just like this. Now, when I open this up, look what happens here. I have a seam where no raw edges show. Take a look at that, all right? There's the seam where no raw edges show. Now to do the next one, watch what you do because it's really cool. You open it up and you know on the top row, the red is in the middle. Well, here's our other one that was on the right hand side. Now this one gets, they're gonna join right here. This side needs to be lined up with this. So we're gonna turn this over wrong side out. We're gonna line it up and we're gonna put in two pins to hold it. And here's another pin to hold it. Remember, we've lined up here, we've lined up here. You don't want it to be on there, wonky. And now we're gonna mark that one quarter inch. It's a tiny seam. You could do a half. If you find the half easier, and you wanna do a half of an inch like we did on the practice, you can do that, but your pillow will be smaller, know that. The bigger you make the seams, the smaller your pillow. The smaller you make the seams, the bigger the pillow. Weird, huh? Okay, let me get this. Okay, let me make my little line to sew on. All right, now I still have some thread left over from last time. So I'm just gonna tie a knot, roll it off, Whoops, I let go. It may not make a knot. It did. Still made a knot. Okay. Now I'm going to start this. I'm not going to keep taping this. This is long enough, but you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down and up, and then I'm going to start back stitching. Okay, I've got my knot and a gap. So I go back and put my needle in where the knot is, close to that anyway, and I come up on the line just a wee bit in front where my thread was. The smaller these stitches, the better and stronger your pillow will be. And I'm going to do this back stitch just like I did on the other two all the way to the end. And then you guys, after you finish this one, you're gonna get your middle ones. This is the middle. This is the middle. And you're going to, remember the middle is opposite. Remember you have the pattern ones on the outside on row one, and you have the solid on the outside of row two. So when you get ready to join these two, you have to take a uh, have a have your one that has four, lay it on top, do the pinning, pin pin, mark the line, stitch. Then you will open this one out. It'll be joined, and you take this one just like you did on the last one. You lay it on very straight, pin, pin, stitch here, and row two will be joined. And then you do the same thing with row three. All right, I'll see you in class.